Yo, 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 YouTube. Today, I'm going to show you how you can buy and sell low-end cards for a profit. Check this out. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Adam, and this is The Dollar Box. At the Dollar Box, we aim to show you how to buy undervalued, underpriced cards out of the Dollar Box bin and sell them for profits. Okay, so at the intro, we mentioned how the purpose of this video is to show you how to buy and sell low-end cards and make some money off of them. Somebody say make money, money, make money, money, money. So I've come up with 10 tips, tricks, hacks, whatever you want to call them, to show you how to buy and sell low-end sports cards and make a profit so that you can buy those bigger cards that you want down the road. The number one tip is buy bulk. you got to have quantity. If you're going to sell, if you're going to buy a card for 20 cents and sell it for a dollar, you need to sell a whole ton of them to get any real money. So you need to have lots of inventory. And there's a big advantage in that because generally the more quantity you, you buy at one time, the better price you're going to get. Then you don't have to turn around and sell them for as much to still make a profit. <sighs> bulk. So there's several ways you can buy bulk. And if you've watched this channel with any regularity, you've seen a lot of the ways I do it. It's mainly lots on eBay. I'll buy some personal collections in my area. Um, I'll take a look at Facebook Marketplace for people selling collections. Um, I'll buy out of dollar boxes at card shows. Uh, you name it, I've tried to do it. And a lot of times it's through just connecting someone who's got a few things for sale, seeing what else they have for sale, and then getting some bulk that way. For example, recently I had found a dealer that was selling some cards that I wanted to get at a pretty fair price and so I went to that eBay seller's um, dashboard or whatever you want to call it their seller ID to see what else they had lo and behold they had a bunch of other cards that I wanted so I made them a pitch and I said hey I'm even willing to you know buy these off of eBay for you save you some money if we can do some kind of a bulk deal we worked it out and it turned out to be a great deal for both of us it's a win-win for both of us Tips and tricks number two is only buy players that have resale value. If you want to resell low dollar cards, you have to do it of a player that has hobby because you're going to try to sell these things in larger quantities. Um, you need lots of cards available to purchase to be able to resell. So you need a player that you know is popular and in a lot of sets and things like that. So it has to be a player that can resell. So, the, you know, I, I don't really care what player it is. That's, you know, that's up to you, of course. But look for some of the big names, Hall of Famers, um, players with championship rings, uh, MVPs, had long careers, you know, iconic in their sports. Those are the ones that you're going to be able to do a lot of the low-end flipping with. No, I'm not saying you can't do that with any player. Uh, but you have to be a little bit more player focused if you're going to sell low-end cards because you need those multiple card purchases from customers. All right, tip number three is you have to be willing to tie up some capital for longer term. This is not really the flip game. Um, to, to that end, there are definitely cards you can buy, put on, and sell. I mean, I have a lot of cards where I'll buy them at a show on Sunday and they're sold by Tuesday. Um, that that is fairly typical, but there might be several cards, especially when you're buying bulk and you're buying collections, you're buying lots. There might be some cards in there that are not great sellers, and you have to hang on to them for a while. So you have to be willing to to find space to store them, and um, also commit that capital to them. It should be a smaller amount, being their lower end cards, but you might have to hang on to some money in them and sort of ride it out until you can make that sale. Just keep sell, sell. sell them. Tip number four is know the cards. 
do your research. And what I mean by that is, let's say you want to start selling Kobe Bryant cards. Well, you better really know Kobe Bryant cards in and out, especially if you're selling low-end stuff. Everybody knows about the EX Essential Credentials Rookie Parallels and the autographs and patches and the exquisite cards. Everybody knows the, the, the big main things, but you need to know all the little collector's choice cards and the little low-end parallels and, and what they sell for and what they can market for. Not just for individual cards you're looking at buying, but also when you're looking at buying the bulk, you need to know what's in that bulk lot. Um, what can you turn around and get that kind of money up back out of them for? This takes you a lot of time and energy. It took me a couple of years to really research all the different cards of a certain player that I carry and I sell, uh, mainly Brett Favre, of course. And I could pretty much tell you every card, every version of its parallel, what I think I can sell it for, what I want to pay for it, and so on. Because I've been doing it enough. It makes it a lot quicker when I pull up a... And some of these lots, you got to be fast because things sell really fast, too, sometimes, if they're a good price, especially. But I can pull a lot up flip through it and see, oh, there's 20 cards for 10 bucks. Well, that card I can sell for $12 alone. Well, I got, that's a good buy, that kind of thing. So you have to get to know the cards. Then I have what I like to call a base price. What I mean by that is you have to find a margin for a player um, that you're going to carry to try to target your price per card that you're going to pay okay so let's say you're a player you're you you're looking at resale and low-end cards let's say a score card or a you know a tops card or base card or something like that is goes normally for four to five bucks well you're going to not want to pay more than a dollar a card when you're buying lots of that player because the those are the lowest cards that you can sell so for example, let's say you got a, a 10 card lot and there's three score base and two tops and then a couple of higher end cards that you know you can get some money on. You want to make sure that what you're paying for the each card individually when you split it up by the quantity, that you can get that money back out of each of the lower end, lower, lower end um, cards in that lot. Tip number six is to have safe and organized storage and file systems. So you can kind of see behind me here, I have my fireproof safe with my Slido drawers and my trays and everything that all my cards are organized in. So you want to do this for a couple of reasons. Obviously safe, you don't want your inventory to be at a fire risk or a risk of theft or something like that. Find a good, safe place, clean, dry place to keep them that's out of the sunlight and so forth, so, so none of it gets wrecked. The other reason you want to do that um, for the organization portion of it is just so that you know what you have and also for filling those orders. So I might sell 70 or 80 cards in a day or two. Well, I need to be able to try to get those pulled out of inventory as fast as I can and ready to fill. Uh, so I'm not wasting too much time just, just pulling orders. One of the things I've recently started doing is giving automatic discounts for quantity purchased. So eBay does have an option. Um, almost all my sales I do on eBay. And they do have an option on there where it's after you buy the first card, you can get the second card 5% off, 10% off, you know, whatever you want to set it at. And then, you know, up to, okay, if you buy five cards, then you get 20% off. Since I have built up such a large inventory now, it was smart for me to start looking at better ways to move those and move them all to in uh, a single buyer instead of one card to this guy, one card to that guy, one card to this person. Uh, it's better if I have this person orders 10 cards, this person orders 20 cards, this person orders 13 cards. Even if it's multiples of the same card, it's an advantage for me to get some of that card, those cards moved out, get some of my capital back, uh, right away and then I can use that to pr again purchase bigger cards or buy more lots to split up and, and sell more cards. Sell, 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 sell. Number eight is a big one and I know people hate to do it but offer free shipping. I would rather see the card priced 
correctly, you can see a, a $5 card priced at a dollar, but then the shipping is six bucks. Like you're not fooling anybody. Everybody knows what it costs to ship. With eBay's standard delivery program, you can ship any single card now for 53 cents. So even if you take that and you add on, you know, the 13% for the eBay costs for payment processing and so forth and the back end fees, um, you know, even if you're going to try to figure in something for um, envelope or top load or whatever, whatever you need to get this card out, you're going to do much better if you're offering that free shipping and uh, just pricing your cards up slightly to cover any of those costs. So. Let me give you an example. So my lowest price card in my in the store is a dollar twenty nine cents. So to me, that's about the lowest end price I'd be willing to go for a sale that I'm doing on the internet and have to ship and so on and so forth. So if I look at a dollar twenty nine cents, take out the cost of the stamp, which is fifty three cents for standard delivery, which includes tracking. Take out the cost of the envelope, which is let's say a penny for argument's sake. Uh, cost of the label which is another penny and um, then the back end fees of 13 percent so that's about what 15 cents something like that so I look at it at the end um, I have basically about a dollar in costs uh, maybe a little bit less than that so I make about 30 cents in the sale of that card number nine are the places you can go to make these sales so Probably the best way to actually do it would be to have your own website because that would be the lowest amount of expense to selling. Um, but how do you drive traffic to it? Where do you get your customers? And the more you go into like advertising it or you know building and shopping carts to your store to make it easier to check out, things like that, starting to add a lot more costs onto it then anyway. Um, so I don't really suggest that unless you're going to be like a super large seller, like baseball got baseball cards you know they have 10 million cards listed or something like that you know or a Burbank if you're gonna be something like that that's fine then you would do it off your own website plus people would know who you are um, but as a small time seller I would say you want to use ComC, star stocks and or eBay I prefer eBay but on there a long time I find it super easy to transact uh, I know exactly what the costs are going to be, how the feedback system works, shipping, that eBay standard mailing is amazing. Um, that really was a game changer for me when the eBay started that. And the other thing is I like the physical possession of the cards. When I buy a lot, I want to get them here. I want to look at them, look at the condition. Some of them I might keep. Some of them I might feel like are worth grading, things like that. I like to do that evaluation with ComC and StarSox. It's not something you're really going to do is take possession of it, which brings me to ComC and StarStock, and that's their bread and butter. If you're somebody who just wants to go in, put some money in account, buy something at a quarter, try to sell it for 50 cents, and just get that quarter, you know, or that, that difference deposited into your account and keep that train moving, then ComC is going to be your place to go for that. They do have a pretty fair amount of traffic. There are a lot of buyers on there. And um, I've seen quite a few sellers that that's primarily where they do their car business. So that's certainly a, a place that you can go. Starstock would be the place you'd go if you were wanted to deal mainly in rookie cards and you're looking at sort of raw graded cards, if that makes any sense. So you're buying lots of rookies and then you're kind of looking at them going oh this looks like it would grade out really well i bet it'd be a star stock a so even though i paid two dollars for it to, to just buy a plane it has a plain raw card i think i can get a star stock a and then it sells for about eight bucks something to that effect so star stock's great for that purpose and tip number 10 do not be afraid to sell at cost or at a loss not every card you ever buy is going to make you money. It's just not how it works. So, especially if you're buying lots, because you're getting kind of whatever's in it. You might have bought the lot for two particular cards out of the 15 that were in it. You have to be willing on some of those 13 to maybe let them go for whatever just to get out of them. Because you're going to have your, your money and your profit in the other ones that you bought the lot for.
Let me know down in the comments what you think of this video. If you have any feedback on any of the, the top 10 lists here that I shared, I'd love to hear from you and get a discussion going. And one last thing before I let you go, something very important to remember. Every card has a profit in it if you can get that card for the right price. That's it for now. Until next time, we'll see you again soon. Yeah.